Most people do whatever they can to avoid rejection, right? Because rejection hurts. In fact, your brain sees rejection or handles rejection in the same way that it does, um, you know, when you get physically injured, you fall and break your leg or whatever, skin your knee, right? It sees rejection in the same way. And so it hurts just the same. It activates the same parts of the brain as actual physical injury. Now, the topic of rejection has been on my mind recently because I'm about to start uh, searching for a new literary agent. I'm about to finish up a book proposal and um, you know, I know that the likelihood is that I will not get a yes on my first attempt to find an agent. Although that's a negative thought. So I said the likelihood, but I could get a yes on my first try. And there's some positive thinking for you, right? I could, I could get a yes on my first try. And most manifestation strategies talk about, you know, the importance of positive thinking. And I know this well because I'm a law of attraction coach and I've been studying manifestation for very many years. And I know that that's, you know, that I need to take a positive approach, mental approach, right? Have a positive mindset around this, you know, around the possibility of getting rejection or of not getting rejected, right? But the thing is that as I start to send out query letters, I know that that's where my mind is going to go is to, you know, I might get rejected and this is scary and it could be painful and it might hurt my self-esteem and all these things. And that's because the brain, it's the brain's job to go there. It's the brain's job to tell you that you shouldn't do things that are scary or could be painful or harmful. Right? And we know the brain thinks that rejection is the same as a skinned knee. So why wouldn't it tell you not to send out, in my case, a query letter or not to go knocking door to door to sell something or not to have um, discovery calls with potential clients who could say no, right? So um, yeah, even though it's not threatening your life, your brain is going to tell you not to do this, right? But besides people like me, like artists, there are salespeople, sales professionals, and there are um, uh, people who are fundraising for something that all have to face rejection. Matter of fact, you face rejection if you're dating on a dating app or um, selling vacuum cleaners door to door, if people still do that. So because I was thinking about rejection, I saw an audiobook called Rejection Proof. And it's written by a man, I don't know how to pronounce his name, uh, Jia Jiang. Anyway, um, he decided to take a challenge to a hundred, a hundred day challenge. Um, I guess it was called a hundred day rejection challenge. And, um, you know, to try to get an acceptance in the process, but Anyway, he was doing this rejection challenge and um, my ear, I'm reading about this or listening to the audio book and my ears really perked up when he started talking about artists and in particular authors because authors, many authors, not all, stay positive here, but many authors have a lot of rejections before they actually get an acceptance. And so I've written down here a few examples. So like J.K. Rowling was rejected 12 times before she sold Harry Potter. Stephen King was rejected 80 times before he sold Carrie. Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen were rejected 134 times before they sold Chicken Soup for the Soul to a publisher. And C.S. Lewis was rejected 800 times before he sold The Chronicles of Narnia. And Margaret Mitchell was rejected 38 times before selling Gone with the Wind. So that's a lot of rejection and a lot of pain. But authors like artists are pretty tenacious. They believe in their work usually. And so they keep moving forward. They refuse to give up. They stay committed and um, they want to get their work in the world despite all the rejections. So Zhang, the author of Rejection Proof, says that rejection has a number, that each person has to reach this number before they begin getting yeses, before they begin getting, getting acceptance. So, and that number is different for every person as we can see if we look at these authors, right? 
But this reminded me of something I learned long, long ago um, called your rejection quota. And the idea here is that you have to meet your quota of rejections before you begin getting acceptances. So you have to get a certain number of no's before you get the yes that you're looking for. So, you know, how do you know what your rejection quota is? Well, you only figure it out when you get your first yes, right? So how do you reach this rejection quota? How do you keep asking for what you want despite the fact that um, there is this pain of rejection that you probably want to avoid? Um, I could just say suffer through the rejections and there would be truth to that. But um, there are some strategies that will help you to change your mindset around rejection and you know, you'll suffer less as a result when you have a rejection and you'll get your brain on board a lot faster as well. So the first one is to realize you haven't lost anything. Um, I remember being at a conference one time and Jack Canfield was, um, Jack Canfield was speaking to a group of writers. And what he said was um, that you should consider rejection as if um, you haven't really lost anything. And the, the example he gave was you're at a, like a high school dance and you know, you're in the gym or whatever and you see somebody on the other side and you wanna ask them to dance. And you're afraid to walk across the gym and to ask them to dance because you're afraid you'll get rejected. And what he said is, but if you walk all the way across the gym and you ask them to dance and they say no, has anything changed in your circumstances? Have you changed? No you still don't have a partner to dance with, right? So if you stay in the same place or you walk across the room, either way, nothing's changed. You still don't have a dance partner. So nothing's really changed. You haven't lost anything by trying, even though you gotta know. Um, the other thing he said, because it was a group of writers, was that if you send out a query letter to an editor or an agent or whatever, and you get a rejection, you just meet that rejection by saying, oh, I must have sent it to the wrong person. I'll send it to the right person next time. And so that's a really positive way to, um, to approach almost anything from fundraising to cold calling or whatever. Another strategy is to remember that it's not about you. The rejection is not about you. Um, when someone declines your request, whatever it is, the reason they decline is all about them. Maybe they don't think they have enough money. Maybe they are afraid of what their spouse will say. Maybe um, they uh, don't believe they're good enough. Maybe they're afraid, right? And so this is why a lot of coaches who do these discovery sessions, myself included, like to deep dive into the reasons why somebody has, um, has said no, because it's usually not about the coach or the program, it's about the person. And when you can figure that part out and help them see, you know, or move through that, then they're more likely to say yes. Um, I do believe, I do know that, you know, in a lot of cases, rejection does feel like it's about you. Like it's some comment on your work or who you are or whatever. But in fact, it's not. It's just about the other person. It is. Okay, believe in what you're selling. That is the next tip. So whether you're selling yourself, like you're a coach, or um, you know, you're selling yourself to uh, someone, you know, somebody once said we're always selling. You know, you're selling yourself to a potential um, love interest, or you're, you're selling yourself as a job applicant, or you're selling a product or a service, you have to believe 100% in what you're selling in yourself, or the product or service, or whatever. And if you don't, other people will definitely sense your doubt. Uh, plus, when you have confidence um, in what you want someone to accept or buy from you, it's easy to talk about it in a way that gets others excited, and that's going to get you to a yes faster. Um, also, remain optimistic. So we talked a little bit about optimism earlier, but optimism is really powerful. It makes you tenacious and makes you committed, and you know because you're convinced you're going to get a yes, if you just ask enough times. Um, sometimes people who are optimistic are deemed unrealistic. 
but actually there's there are studies that show that optimism and being unrealistic, you know, those people are more likely to get to the yes, to succeed, to get to their goal than people who are unrealistic and pessimistic and don't think it's going to happen. So you can try some well-loved affirmations like it gets to be easy or it is easy or um, it's always easy or 100% possible 100% of the time um, and see if that doesn't help you have a more positive mindset. And when your brain creates that negative mental chatter, like you'll just, you know, don't do it because you'll just get rejected again, so don't bother, or no one wants what you're selling, or you're not good enough to get the yes, um, shut down your brain in a really polite manner, or even a not polite manner, and just say, thanks, I've got this. Rejection won't, won't kill me. And it won't. And we often say that in personal growth circles. You know, did you try it? And they say, yes. Did you die? No. So it's, rejection's not going to kill you, nor will failure. Um, and the last strategy is to get curious. Because in many, curi many cases, curiosity gets turns a no into a yes. So when you ask, why don't you want to date me? Or why don't you want to um, hire me for your job? Or whatever it is, um, you can turn that, you can sometimes get people to turn it into, turn that no into a yes, because they begin to then think about why they're saying no. And maybe they said no just really quickly, right? In order, yeah, just as a reaction. Like somebody's trying to sell me something, I'm gonna just say no. And then when you begin to delve into why they said no, they might realize that they actually wanna say yes. And that will also help ease the rejection for you um, is when you understand why they're saying no. Um, the other thing is that when you tell people why, when you, when, they, when you give them a reason, there are studies that show that when you can give someone a reason why you're asking them for what you're asking, they're more likely to say yes. So make sure that when you tell people why you want them to say yes, you, you, you know, when you ask them to say yes to something that you explain why it's important to you. So I'm going to be using all these strategies as I go out to look for a literary agent. I'm going to keep reading the book, Rejection Proof, and I suggest that you guys get a copy too. And, and I don't get anything out of that really. <clears throat> and just know that rejection is part of life. And that you can live through it. You're not going to die. It, it may feel like physical pain, but if you begin to really work with these strategies that I've offered you, it will feel less painful and your brain will begin to realize that with each rejection, you're still okay. And there'll be less of that negative mental chatter and less fear on your part. So try the strategies. Let me know in a comment down below this video um, how you have dealt with rejection and stayed positive and kept moving forward. And um, go on over to the, my blog at ninaamir.com and read the associated blog post with this video because I go into a little more depth. And yeah, just let me know how you deal re with rejection. And um, I sure, I'm sure you have some tips that you can share with me as well as the ones I've shared with you. So I'm Nina Amir. I'm the Inspiration to Creation Coach. I am an intuitive transformational catalyst, a certified high performance coach. As I said, a law of attraction coach. I love to help people step into their best self so that they can do the things that they know they want and need to do to get to where they want to go to manifest or create what they want. Um, I like to help them combine their passion and their purpose so they get inspired and that's when they create what they desire. So if you would like to learn how to be the type of person who can do the things that you need to do in order to create what you want, click on the link above and join the Inspired Creator community. That's where I offer transformational coaching and personal coaching, personal growth coaching, spiritual growth coaching. So I combine the personal and spiritual growth aspects because that's who you are, a spiritual being having a human experience. And so we all need both the personal and the spiritual growth work in order to realize our human potential and to fulfill our purpose here. So 
If that's of interest to you, click above. And until I talk to you next time, go out there and achieve more inspired results. Thank you.